Hello, uh, I'm Ricky Wong. I'm the founder of uh, Mop Notates. So today, uh, if you've been to Ignite Talk, uh, last, last night was more about um, Mop Notate as a product, but today I want to talk about a story uh, of Mop Notate so far. I've been at, at this for about a year. A little bit about my background. I have studied a bunch of computer science, uh, did AI and distributed system. I also used to work for Google for about five years in ads and data warehousing. La last year, I also uh, did my MBA at INSEAD and as, actually let me stop the slideshow one second because it's kind of auto playing. There you go. Uh, and as some of you know, case discussions in a business school environment is social reading of story. That's actually how I got inspired to do this. Um, Basically, I'm not a publisher, and I come to you guys from a very humble perspective and I ask a lot of questions. Uh, my goal here is just to share with you my story, and uh, hopefully I will want to get some feedback from you guys as well. So uh, what is Mount Notate? Mount Notate is essentially a tool that you can use to convert uh, your eBooks into social networking apps. And uh, we create the Mount Notate because uh, we think of all the things that we could do, the tablet form factor is what's new, and that's what the uncharted territory is. Um, and there's been a lot of work uh, focusing on the pre-reading experience and the post-reading experience, and we want to figure out what the uh, what in-reading experience uh, is like. And um, so, and as Kelly, Kevin Kelly mentioned, uh, links are extremely important when content goes digital. Um, and one of the challenges we see is that if you look at iBook or EPUB, uh, the web connectivity is also isn't really there yet. So that's why we also created uh, something new rather than uh, pushing our content out uh, onto these platforms. So this is what uh, Mop Notate looks like. We're launched four months ago, and we have about five uh, book apps in the App Store, and we've gone through about 20 iterations. In a very classic um, digital media style, um, we're also tracking everything with analytics, so engagement, uh, so on and so forth. We have some uh, pretty interesting uh, numbers. Basically, we turn every book into a social network uh, for you, so while you're reading, you can talk to other readers, you can add comments, you can share videos and images. Now, I, I'm a huge believer uh, in reading books in the browsers, uh, but people don't really like reading long stuff on a computer. Uh, fortunately, the browser is also a technology, so uh, at the core, we're using HTML5 and just wrapping um, the content as a shell, and we're not really creating any proprietary uh, formats. Now, uh, iPad also has its own challenges, uh, even though we decided to focus on the, uh, on the tablet platform. Uh, first of all, the viral loop is not really well defined. Unlike the web, uh, you, you know, there's Facebook uh, apps and so on and so forth. Uh, getting an app, uh, getting it go viral is still a challenge. And additionally, uh, inputting on the iPad is also difficult. Um, people love reading on the iPad, and we know it already, and that's why uh, there's been this recent explosion of uh, ebooks, uh, but you know, and on the other hand, you know, the other side of it, entering content is uh, quite difficult. So the question is, you know, we can't really have social reading if we have a bunch of passive readers if they're not contributing. And we thought about this, and uh, because we have analytics and we're tracking how our users are engaging with uh, our content, and we're and uh, very, very soon, like a month or so after we launched, we realized that uh, we were getting as much uh, photo contribution as text contribution in uh, our social networks. And the amazing thing is uh, our initial version uh, requires the reader to have the image on hand, and they're still doing this. So, um, so we thought more about this and realized that um, not, uh, books are not just any generic social network like Facebook and Twitter uh, because every book is unique and there are tons of content out there uh, about pretty much any topic that you, you can think of. Uh, take the case of Alice in Wonderland, there are millions of 
videos and images and website out there. And the question is, uh, how can we pull all that stuff directly into the reading experience? Kind of like uh, Kevin Kelly mentioned, how do we recreate that link, you know, that hidden link that is there in the content? How do we resurface those? So um, we essentially uh, created some smart software uh, that will analyze the content of a page and uh, will extract interesting keywords uh, from the page. And we use these keywords to try to reestablish these hidden links. So in the, here you can see the example of a cow pillars, right? And if we just do a, obviously do a simple search on cow pillars on Google, you will probably find a bunch of scientific photographs or about a construction company cow pillar. Uh, here, uh, because, it, because books is a fundamentally a longer form content, has a hard key on it, uh, we ought to be able to figure out the topics of you know, the context of this paragraph. So we're, here we're displaying uh, caterpillar images, but caterpillar images related to Alice in Wonderland. And likewise, there's a, a, in our app in the background showing you that we have the Bible running, showing, uh, displaying videos related to uh, Moses. And the best thing is that uh, we're still coming from a social reading route. So social reading and uh, artificial intelligence are integrated here. So the readers are doing the final selection and we're able to keep the quality high because the uh, humans are doing the last leg of the curation. Um, so last night I bought the Steve Jobs uh, book from Feedbooks. And turns out that it's 650 pages long and I probably won't finish it. Uh, so I let my computer uh, read the book for me and it took a first crack, <laughs> extracted uh, about 80 topics. Um, and you know, that link, you can go there and see like the topics that I'm able to extract. Um, and it just kind of goes in to highlight you know, what I mean by surfacing these interesting keywords, um, using them as a bridge to uh, other media uh, out there. So uh, we're actually you know, feeding all sorts of content to machine right now, because as a lot of you know, books are getting shorter and a lot of um, articles are getting longer. And there's a class of content called long form. Um, so we're just feeding books, long form content, business cases. Uh, the, you know, it's still early, but we, you know, we're trying to fine tune the software and figure out what kind of uh, intelligence we can create here. Um, so to summarize, you know, uh, uh, we what we're essentially trying to do is create enhanced ebooks at scale. Uh, you know, one of the questions that uh, comes up a lot is whether enhanced ebooks are going to be worth the investment, you know, the additional revenue, can we compensate that with, um, you know, the, the additional investment that we have to invest in, can we compensate that with additional revenue? Uh, here, we're hoping that, you know, by doing this, uh, more books can be enhanced. Um, how much time do we have? Um, okay, so as a, as a final closing thought, um, as mentioned, I'm not really a publisher or an author, uh, but I, I love books. Um, I'm one of those guys who would buy books and write a little manual uh, sticker and stick it on it and give it out uh, to my friends. And the, emotionally, the reason I started doing this is because um, it pains me to see that if I write a really interesting blog post, it can go viral with a million reads by the end of today. But books which have um, potential to change your life, but there's still so much uh, friction uh, in these kind of content. Um, I, I think the, the problem uh, isn't really financial because the time for me you know, to invest 10, 20 hours to read a book is so much uh, more valuable than the 10, 20 dollars I spend on books. So I think the opportunity here is uh, tre tremendous. Uh, and any questions? I guess we have plenty of time. What's your yeah, uh, my website is mopnotates.com, uh, but it's actually haven't been updated because we're more of a iPad 
distribution. So we've been focusing more on that. And I also want to put a plug that um, my design advisor, Ines, she, she's here. Uh, she helped me create a lot of the original design. So without her, uh, my app wouldn't look as good because I'm, I'm just an engineer person. So. The link to, oh, the blog? Yes. Th this is just a first draft because I just got the book last night and I let it run overnight, been processing it for like five hours. Um, I, I think there could be a lot more I can do with this. Correct, right. So these keywords could be, okay, oh, uh, repeating a question. So um, we have a bunch of keywords. How are we gonna use that to link to uh, existing media online? So yeah, so these keywords can serve as a bridge to uh, other media out there. A, a search would be a very good uh, approach. Yeah, uh, oh, Adam. Uh, Yeah, so it's definitely a machine learning algorithm. These kind of feedback would be extremely valuable. Uh, in the long term, I think uh, we can start doing some personalization as well, you know, because there's no reason why the Alice in Wonderland that you and I read should be the same as a three-year-old reads, you know. So we can, or, or if you're, you know, if you're more like a video learner or I'm more like audio, we can start doing some of that. But, you know, there's so much low-hanging fruits here, I think, that we can get to that, but you know, there's already a lot we can do. Yes. All right, hello. I have a design question. Yes. Yes, yes. Um, so, right, how, how did I come up with a design? Um, Aina and I, uh, Aina is actually a designer. She's graduated from a school called Art Center. And uh, she and I had the initial hypothesis, uh, but everything is tracked with analytics. So the way I look at it is, you know, your initial guess is more like just a lottery ticket. Um, and, you know, it's like a series of probability. So, you know, the more lottery tickets you buy, you know, you're more likely to hit it. So, you know, the design has changed 20 times. Uh, we're, we see that, for, uh, for example, you know, we see that uh, we actually had uh, Facebook like and tweet buttons in the uh, app, and uh, some, s we have some data to suspect that you know, there, it, it kind of create a paradox of choice if you have too much buttons. Um, so we just removed some of those. Um, the, the icons, the size of icons, everything is being tracked, everything's being compared. Um, it's just building up the, I, I don't know if that kind of what you're getting at, yeah. Exactly. Um, we also do some in-person testing, which is, you know, provide more qualitative input, and that's also extremely valuable. Any questions? Can I, can I ask a question? Interesting while I'm at it. Um, how many of you absolutely love this? And love, love the idea that we can look at books as data and try to find something cross link. And how many of you hate, hate this, that I shouldn't do this? Or indifferent? Okay, maybe we can add. All right. Okay, uh, yeah, so um, we're also thinking about turning this into an API because creating a bookstore and, and the whole thing is not necessarily our strength. We really want to, you know, put out precious resources in what matters. Cool, thank you.